we're going to do a whole bunch of practice problems so you'll get super good at looking at a Lewis structure like this and figuring out what its three-dimensional Vesper shape would be. We'll start out right away with PF3. I've got on this paper these four questions and these are like the thought process that you want to go through every time you figure out the Vesper structure for one of these shapes. Okay? So, the first question here is, how many things are there around the central atom? The first thing you always want to ask yourself, how many things are there around the central atom? Here's the central atom, it's this P here, and it's surrounded by one, two, three bonds and one lone electron pair. So the things around the central atom, they can be either lone electron pairs or bonds. So the point is, three bonds, one lone electron pair, four total things. Okay. So now that we know how many things surround the central atom, four in this case, we ask what structure is this molecule based on? And what I mean by that is what if all four of these things surrounding the central atom, what if they were all other atoms? Okay? If they were all other atoms, we'd get this shape, a tetrahedral shape where we have four atoms surrounding a central atom. We call this tetrahedral. And because this has four things around the central atom, we say that it's based on this tetrahedral structure. Now here's what's important. In PF3, only three of the things that surround the central atom are other atoms. One of the atoms from this tetrahedral structure has been replaced by a lone electron pair. Here's what I mean. This is what PF3 looks like. See that it's very similar to the tetrahedral shape. There are four things that surround this, but one of these atoms from the tetrahedral shape has been replaced by a lone electron pair. So the four things in tetrahedral are four atoms. The four things in PF3 are three atoms and one lone electron pair. So this shape looks kind of like a pyramid from the side, and we call this trigonal pyramidal. It's what we get when we have four things around a central atom, three of them are other atoms, and one is a lone electron pair. Let's talk about bond angles really quickly. So in tetrahedral, every, the angle between every pair of bonds is 109.5 degrees. That's when we have all atoms around the central atom. But when we got unshared electron pairs, these unshared electron pairs, they push a little harder against these atoms. Unshared electron pairs, they need a little bit more space than regular atoms do. So what that means is that all of these atoms are going to get pushed kind of in this direction. And so the angle between them, this bond, is going to be smaller because they're moving in this direction. So for the uh, the trigonal pyramidal shape here, instead of 109.5 that we'd have in the tetrahedral, we get an angle that's a little smaller than that and is more like 107 degrees. But just keep in mind that it's similar to 109.5, it's just been compressed a little bit because of these unshared electrons that are, are pushing on the bonds a little bit more. NO2, and the whole thing is an ion, it has a 1 minus charge. Charges don't have any impact on the Vesper shape though, so don't worry at all if you see something that has a charge. We just want to go through this thought process. Number one, how many things are there around the central atom? So single bonds and double bonds, they count for the same. Doesn't matter what type of bond it is, all that matters is that it is a bond, okay? So we have one bond, two bonds, and then one unshared electron pair. So for this molecule, we have three total things around the central atom. Two bonds, one unshared electron pair. Three total things. So now that we know we have three total things, we ask what structure is this molecule based on? In other words, what structure would have three things around a central atom and all of them would be other atoms? That would be this shape, which is the trigonal planar shape. It's three atoms around a central atom all of them are lined up in this plane, which is why we call it trigonal planar. Okay. Now on to number three. Which atoms from this structure are replaced by lone electron pairs? 
So NO2 has two bonds to oxygen, these two oxygens, but then it has this lone electron pair. So that means that one of these three atoms is replaced by a lone electron pair in NO2. So the structure is going to look like this. All right? Look at how similar it is to the trigonal planar shape, but this atom here has been replaced by the unshared electrons that are up there. So that is going to give us this bent shape. Now when we talk about angles in the trigonal planar molecule, there is a 120 degree angle between all of these bonds. This unshared electron pair in the bent molecule though pushes these atoms a little bit harder than this atom does because unshared electron pairs like to have a little extra space. So that means that in the bent molecule, these atoms are going to be a little bit closer to each other. The angle is going to be less than 120 degrees because of this pushing. It's going to be more like uh, about 116 degrees. Okay, So that's a bent molecule you can get when you have two bonds and one lone electron pair around a central atom. NO3 1 minus. Remember, don't worry at all about the charge on this molecule. It doesn't matter for Vesper at all. The first question that you should ask yourself is, number one, how many things are there around the central atom? There's a double bond here. Doesn't matter that it's a double bond. It's just a bond. So there are one, two, three bonds to other atoms around the central atom. So that means that for number two, what structure is this molecule based on? It's going to be based on the trigonal planar shape, which looks like this. Okay, Trigonal planar. Now, for number three, which atoms are replaced by lone electron pairs? For NO3-1-, none of them are replaced by unshared electron pairs. Three atoms surround the central atom. So that means that this molecule has this shape. It is trigonal planar with 120 degrees between each of the atoms. OF2. Number one, how many things are there around the central atom? Okay, There are two bonds and then there are two lone electron pairs. So that means that there are four things total around this atom. So what structure is this molecule based on? If you have four things around a central atom, your structure is going to be based on the tetrahedral shape. Now, for number three here, it asks which atoms are replaced by lone electron pairs. There are four atoms here in red and tetrahedral, but in OF2, there are only two atoms surrounding the central atom. The other two atoms have been replaced by these unshared electron pairs. So that means that OF2 is going to look like this. Here are the two lone electron pairs, this one and this one. These two lone electron pairs that have, been, that have replaced two of these atoms in the tetrahedral structure. So if we look at it from the side, it looks a lot like the tetrahedral shape but it's missing. You could say that it still has these two atoms, but it's missing this atom and this atom. They've been replaced by these unshared electron pairs. This is going to give the molecule a bent shape. And for angles, these unshared electron pairs are going to push these atoms together harder than other atoms would, Okay, because those unshared electron pairs need a little bit of extra space. So in a regular tetrahedral molecule, the angles between the bonds are 109.5, but in the bent, where these are pushing harder, it's going to be more like 105 degrees, because we have two electron pairs that are pushing. So they really push these two atoms closer together. So we get a bent molecule with 105 degrees when we have a central atom surrounded by two bonds and two lone electron pairs. HCN. How many things around the central atom? Got one bond here, one triple bond here. Doesn't matter that it's a triple bond, it's just two bonds. A bond here, a bond here. So if we have two things around a central atom, the structure is based on this, uh, this linear thing that we've got here. Here's a central atom, atom on the side, atom on the side. Which atoms are replaced by lone electron pairs? None. Because we got an atom here and an atom here. So that means that the final shape is going to be this linear shape. And since we're calling it linear, these three atoms are in a line. 
that means that we're going to have 180 degrees between these two angles. So if you have two atoms, you know, two bonds surrounding a central atom, you get a linear shape 180 degrees between the atoms. NH4 1 plus. How many things around the central atom? 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means that it is based on this tetrahedral shape, four things around a central atom. And for number three, none of these things around the central atom are unshared electron pairs. So we're going to have four atoms surrounding the central atom. We're going to have a tetrahedral shape as our final shape. And the angles between each bond are going to be 109.5 degrees. OK, you might be getting the hang of this. That's great. I'm going to do a few more practice problems because it is so useful to just keep going through these steps so that it becomes second nature. Every time you look at one of these Lewis structures to determine the Vesper shape, you want to go through these three or four steps to figure out what it's actually going to look like. It should just become automatic. So that's why I'm doing these practice problems like over and over again so that it can just become very natural and you won't ever doubt yourself when you're doing these sort of problems. OK, SBH3, number one. How many things are there around the central atom? One, two, three bonds, one lone electron pair. So there are four things, four things total around the central atom, and it's going to be based on a tetrahedral shape. Now, uh, which atoms are replaced by lone electron pairs? In SBH3, one of these four things is a lone electron pair. So that means that its shape is going to be uh, like this, because this lone electron pair replaces this atom. This is the trigonal pyramidal shape. And it's going to be an angle of 107 between these bonds, a little bit smaller than 109.5 of the tetrahedral, because this lone electron pair pushes these atoms a little bit harder than an atom would. O3, which is ozone. How many things are on the central atom? One, two bonds, and one lone electron pair, three things total which means that this is going to be based on a trigonal planar shape. Here it is. How many things are replaced by lone electron pairs? Well, instead of having three atoms as in the trigonal planar shape, we're going to have two atoms and one lone electron pair. So this is the shape that I'm going to get. Here is a lone electron pair that replaces this atom. And that means that I'm going to have a, where is it? Oh, there, OK, OK, it is a bent molecule a bent molecule with less than 120 degrees between these angles, because this is, uh, this is pushing a little harder, angle of about 116 degrees. One more, and then we'll be done. SeCl2. How many things are there around the central atom? There are four things. Two bonds, two lone electron pairs. So this, is, this has four things total. So it's based on this tetrahedral shape. Which atoms are replaced by lone electron pairs in this molecule? two of these atoms. And because of that, it's going to have a shape that looks like this. Two atoms from here. Two of them have been replaced by lone electron pairs, this one and this one. Lone electron pair, lone electron pair. And this is also going to give a bent shape. And the angles between the atoms in this bent molecule are going to be about 105 degrees because these lone electron pairs are pushing uh, pretty hard against these two atoms. So that's what we're going to get. Anyway, these steps, these steps that I keep talking about, are the ones you always want to go through every time you're looking at a Lewis structure and figuring out what the Vesper shape is. Once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard. You think about the structure that the molecule is based on, and then you just figure out how many of the atoms are not there how many of the atoms have been replaced by lone electron pairs, and that will tell you what the final structure is. So keep practicing this. Keep these steps in mind until it's just second nature and you won't have any trouble at all with these problems. Good luck.